Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis. If you are looking for the most accurate, professional and profitable crypto analysis on YouTube, well you, my friend, are in the right place. We today are going to be together going through the Bitcoin chart. I'm going to be explaining current trades, targets, setups that we have ahead for the rest of the week to come. Here we are on a Monday. We're prepared, we're ready, and we're going to crush the charts together. I want to make you as prepared as I am for this week of trading ahead, a big, important week of trading that start the week as we mean to go on every single day. That's being ahead of the competition, ahead of the curve, and being ready for the next levels. So we're going to go jumping straight into the chart here, picking up where I left off my last YouTube video. But obviously, I was very bullish indeed, right? And I was explaining the long setup that we had to the downside. The last video was this one, important Bitcoin trading update. I am long and bullish. And in that, obviously, I gave the long level to the downside, which was our daily zone of support. As mentioning, we had five levels of confluence down there. Uh, it took a little bit of time, but we eventually did come down, of course, and we tapped that daily level absolutely perfectly. Okay, and this is what I mean. We've got to be prepared. We've got to be ready. And then we've got to execute. And as I mentioned, you know, a lot of people managing to get in that long trade with me. This one was pretty lovely because he got into the exact dollar low uh, after that long trade. It was pretty epic. And then you can see then the stop loss, very small indeed. But that was a epic to the dollar entry there, my friend. Well done indeed. But how do we get those, you know, exact dollar long entries, you know, or just a very good long entry? It's by remaining patient. It's by recognizing those high confluence zones. And then we come down to those high confluence zones. We take the trade with no, no sort of, you know, hesitation, no fear, no anxiety, no scaredness. You know, none of those emotions. We just see the setup. We know the target, we see it get hit, we take the long trade. Simple as that, CC pool style. So it was great to see so many people getting in those long trades with me there. And of course, that then brought us up to the potential three third touch setup, which is a setup that we have within Chart Champions, right? And we come up to this high and it ended with a swing failure pattern. And I actually, well, it was a third touch setup, but I approached it as a swing failure pattern in terms of like a swing failure pattern 2.0. And so we come up and we take this high. Okay, overall, I'm still bullish. You know, I hadn't lost my bias at this point. I was still very much bullish, wanted to see a new high made on the Bitcoin chart. So I'm looking for at least 23,800, right? I want to see a new high made. So what is the best way that we could get this? Now, the third touch setup is a, an acceptable short trade, right? But bring it down, take the last low, and let's try and push it back up one more time to the high. In the end, this is kind of how it played out. Uh, we got the push up here. So this was that rise. We pulled back, actually making a higher low, and then we got the subsequent rise to the upside. And you can see this was around... 15 minutes past seven, aware of a potential swing fair pattern at this time. I also was posting over on Twitter before this, like saying, I remain in long trades. I am bullish on Bitcoin. I have no short trades open. I am only in long trades. And if you want to see my Elliott wave count, then you can get that over on the website right now. <laughs> but you can see from Friday even, I recognizing, you know, on Friday you know, around 7 p.m., we're hitting these local resistances, local I'm referring to from this major high to low. We're banging into like local resistances around here, right? But I'm telling my team, this is from within the Discord, you know, we're hitting these local resistances. It could pull back from here, but I am not shorting yet. I want higher prices to come. I remain bullish and in all long trades. Of course, I've closed major swing shorts. I want to see a new high made here on Bitcoin. This was on Friday. Then on Sunday morning, I just confirmed to my team once more, just to let you know I remain bullish and I want a new high made. Okay, that new high made obviously in the end happened. We come up, we take this high, okay, Actually, this is not a swing fair pattern. This did not end in a swing fair pattern. This is more of a failed auction, by the way. But we come up basically and we take this high here and end in a bit of a failed auction. We come up, we come back down. And then at 11 p.m., we got the stock market open, right? And the stock market opened bearishly. And as the stock market was opening, Bitcoin at 11 p.m. got the retest of the local CC. That's Fibonacci from high to low, okay? i just show you here, Fibonacci from high to low. We come back into that third touch setup almost, once again, with the high, 
break it, bat test, on the CME open, on the CC, on a bearish uh, looking stock market, right? And from there, we've obviously started to get this larger pullback to the downside. Okay, so we've started to get this larger pullback to the downside. So now this daily has obviously been hit. That was the old daily that we we're trading off. Remember, we had this lovely uh, target box. I'm trying to find my rector. <laughs> Here we go. Try. We had this lovely target box. So this is just give a really quick recap and then we'll start to move on to what's happening now and next, right? So we obviously were trading around here. I gave the long entry around this target box. We come down, perfectly tap that. Of course, I've explained how we had lower term time frame entries. Price comes up for a third touch setup here, pulls back just to make a higher low, okay? Almost like a swing fair pattern 2.0. We come up one more time where we were aware of a potential swing fair pattern. In the end, that swing fair pattern doesn't happen and we pull up, pull back, retest the CC, pull back once more, okay? I wanna show you the level that we actually did reject off, off of this high, or very close to, let's just say this, and it was this NPOC. So if you've been writing down the levels that I've been giving you over you know, the past week, you will know we had this 23,970 level marked on the chart. This was an NPOC, and this was a level that Without a doubt, if you go back and check, I mean, we can do this together right now, right? Let's just go back and check the last video that I have Hi, released, and you will see within here, we Hello had this 23,970 level, okay? So it's undeniable, we've had this level marked out. And you can see how we come up, tap this level, get the pullback, get the retest, and get one more pullback. Okay, so I've talked you through everything that's happened. I've explained the exact reason why we got that low and how I predicted that one. And that was an open long that I took along with many others. This was a much harder trade because this wasn't a swing failure pattern. But we come up, we have slightly front run this level right, we've got a pullback, we've retested the CC, we've seen the stock market pulling back at the same time, right? Okay, opened, filled the gap, pulls back. So I'll show you this on a lower term time frame. If we just zoom in here, okay. You can see how at, let me see here. So here you can see Sunday the at 11 p.m., gap down, closed gap, pull down, and on Bitcoin simultaneously at 11 p.m., that's where you got the move up into the CC and then pulls back down. So the stock market once again moving in great correlation with uh, Bitcoin, which is, is great to see, right? And now we have, uh, in my opinion, the biggest level to the downside here. Well, it's actually another NPOC, but it's at 22,860. So this for me is a big uh, level of support. Once again, we can take it as a bit of a box. Okay, if I just try and highlight this for you, you can take this as a bit of a box. As with the daily level, we can trade off the reaction. One thing that I'd be aware of here is how the open goes in one hour's time. So in one hour's, we got the uh, stock market open. If we lose this support, because I will always say, you know, this for me is a long trade opportunity, but I can take a trade and lose the trade. Of course, we could just um, simply get no reaction, then I would just simply not take the trade. And then we've got this larger range to be trading where we could look down and actually start to approach the analysis like this. If we start to pull our parallel channel within here, okay, we then have our parallel channel low and up to the high. And then if we lose this weekly NPOC, which we had our target box of around here. If we lose that level, then we could look back down towards the lower of our channel, right? And this is basically just a large, bigger range. So I hope that has explained that. And our level to the upside is, my, for myself, also very clear. And it would be this larger weekly level up here, which is at 24,500. I'd be aware of one more potential swing fire pattern of this high, because this was a slight front run of the NPOC. Okay, so we obviously we could get that one more attempt for another swing fire pattern. But for me, like right now as we're speaking, this would be a time of patience. And I will just mention if we lose that range low, then obviously we can start to look down to much lower levels, right? But for me, um, there's no need to panic. There's no need to be scared. There's no need to be fearful. It's, hey, we've got our levels. For me now, I got to remain patient I would not take a trade, for example, where we are here. I'd wait for my next level to the downside or my next level to the upside. And for until then, we're just simply range bound. There's a lot of opportunities on the altcoins today. Of course, they are red, but remember, as traders, we're happy to short altcoins. Just as we can make money on rises, we can make money on the pullbacks too. Just as on Bitcoin, I'm bullish on Bitcoin, right? Doesn't mean I'm scared to short. Doesn't mean I'm not going to short this asset. It just means... You know, I'm, I'm happy to trade the market up and down. I'm not here for 
anything else other than to win trades on on on, on the, these assets, right? So it's it's important to recognize that as a trader, we disconnect ourselves from our personal needs and wants or or loves, so to speak, of the asset we're trading. We have to approach this in a non biased way. We're not putting anything on a pedestal. We're saying, here's the asset, irrelevant what of what it is. Here's my technical analysis. Here's my next trade. Now I'm going to remain patient, wait for that level to be hit, check their reaction, take the trade, yes or no. How do we remember or remind ourselves to look for the reaction? It would be off of the order flow. Okay, so on the order flow down here, we would come down here and check to see what's happening. Are we getting divergences? Are we getting any trapped traders? What's the delta like? What's the um, <clears throat> CVD doing down here? You know, we can start to use things like the H or the high and low of the candle, the time taking the trades count. So we'd come down here on a lower term time frame and look at information such as this to determine is this a good reaction, yes or no? Okay, uh, so for me, this is like really important systematic way of trading you know nothing's random it's all planned it's all continuously done the same way my analysis is not suddenly different you know it's the same way I'm approaching the market every single time and for me this is the most profitable way of trading period and it's it's why I love to do trading right I love this systematic and, and methodical approach of trading and for me it's brilliant it's just like a video game once you've got the tools once you've got the arsenal behind you of tools then you're just ready to come in here and conquer the market it literally is a video game and when you love what you do uh you know I spend hours <laughs> used to spend hours upon hours and upon hours playing video games and now I spend hours upon, upon hours upon hours doing trading because for me this is my hobby this is my love this is my passion this is my video game and that's I guess why it's also a competitive environment I love that type type of uh competitive field as well and it's good to also though have you as my team members right we're one big team of cc pool uh so that's also brilliant as well um so yeah that was my update of today i've talked you through the levels if you want to see more from myself then of course you can watch my last night's champions live stream which as i was saying this really is a do not miss very important one covering my elliot wave camp so if you want to see the elliot wave camp then um <clears throat> You know, you can get that over on the website. Of course, I was saying, um, you know, I'm not shorting Bitcoin yet. I want higher prices to come. Bullish and all in longs. That was on Friday. On Sunday, we did make the new long. Okay, so I wanted to see a new high made Sunday morning. Sunday night, we made the new high. Um, so, you know, you can see my bias is very, is very nice to be playing along with. And if you want those updates, you know where to get it. That's on the Discord that you can access to via the website. I'll tell you one final thing before we end the Champions live stream. And for myself, the new video that we released today was our new contenders front run video. This is how to determine when a front run is actually a front run or when a front run is, statistically speaking, going to be hit. This is a very, very, very good video and plays very well into the, what we're seeing today, right? Okay, of helping you understand when is a front run actually going to turn into a real front run or when is it slightly front run and then is actually going to be hit later in time? I share my statistics, I share my analysis on this and with the theory behind deciphering that information. So if you want that, you can get that. And of course, the whole course is over on the website. Um, you know, we've got everything for you over on there, right? So if you want all that, you know where to find it. For everybody else, I'm just going to say thank you ever so much. I truly hope you've enjoyed this analysis and it has been helpful for you. I'll end with one final summary. We pulled back to the daily. This was a level we were already in waiting for, for the long opportunities. Move up for the third touch setup. Get the pullback for almost a swing fair pattern 2.0 type theory. Move up to, wasn't swing fair pattern of the high, but it was a failed auction, onto that 23,970 level that we had marked out ready and waiting for. We got the pullback, we got the retest of the CC, and that retest was on the 20, you know, at 11 p.m. as the CME opened, as the ES come up and closed its gap and started to pull back, Bitcoin starts to pull back with it. Now it's a time to remain patient for one of our next levels to be tapped to activate the next trade setup. I will let you know if and when I take that for myself, that will be over in the Discord. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I will make sure to catch you in the next one. To make sure you don't miss that, subscribe and tick the notification bell. You want to be alerted as soon as I make these videos. Very important information and levels will always be shared with you. Okay, thank you ever so much and I will catch you very shortly indeed. I will end actually with the legal trade disclaimer as always. And that is, this video is not financial advice. Trades on paper, demo trades, and do your own research at the end of the day. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, and goodbye.